Okay, so yeah, we'll just dive into it. I'm sitting here with uh, Rana. She's part of Web Events and here to get to know her and what she does and what fills her up and go from there. So welcome. And Thank you. I'm happy to sit down with you and chat and learn about what you do. And uh, uh, I know you just got off the trail. You were out with your daughter, right, on a, yeah. on a hike with the Still school. Hike. So we uh, <laughs> this much got snow. to, yeah, like, what are we, 50, 50 centimeters or something? Yeah, they're about 25 freak, to 50, uh, depending on where you are. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. So uh, yeah, it looks like winter here in, in Canmore. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, we've known each other for a little while. You've been helping out with Web here, and you don't know what we're doing. But um, there's a lot of people that want to know more, and myself included. You know what, what led you down this journey? Um, uh, maybe we'll start with what you do uh, and what you'll be doing at Web, and and just maybe a little bit of your story, however you want to tell it. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, I work as a naturalist and hiking guide here in the Canadian Rockies. I also teach yoga and meditation and I rest yoga nidra. But my passion, my passion really is how to get that outside and get people outside. And um, I'm also the first forest therapy guide here in Alberta, one of the first in Canada, and I train guides. So I train hiking guides, uh, I train forest therapy guides, and so a lot of my real passion is nature connection and helping people get connected to themselves through time in nature. And um, I kind of came into this work reluctantly, in that as many guides, uh, if you talk to a lot of guides, it's more of a calling versus you know, you don't come out of high school, and most people don't come out of high school thinking, I'm going to be a guy. You know, it just, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't happen that way. And um, for me, I, it was a calling, and it was an interesting experience. Uh, I came out here to the Rockies on the last day of high school for a summer job. Uh, I was searching for something, like a lot of the young people who are out here, mm -hmm. and I just did outdoor stuff because that's kind of what you did, and I certainly wasn't very good at it. I'm from Saskatchewan. My parents <laughs> didn't do this stuff. And I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of blisters. Um, and I was on one of my first backpacking trips in Yoho National Park, going into Le Yoho. And, and uh, it's a story in and of itself. But to make a long story short, I had a visionary experience. I, uh, there was one point in that trip on day two where I was on my own. Um, we were on this, we all separated out on this little meadow up on the Ice Line Trail. It's a really beautiful trail in Yoho National Park. And, and I remember coming over the rise and I was looking down at Takaka Falls. So normally you start at Takaka Falls and this is the second highest waterfall in all of Canada. It's like 300 meters, it's really tall. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so from this vantage point, I was looking down on the falls and I could see the ice field and the, the, the glacier and the entire ice field that fed it. And it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen and I just burst into tears. And at that moment, there was this little voice that said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to you're going to take people into nature. You're going to connect them to themselves and to nature. And I, I, my reaction was, no, I'm not. I'm a girl from Saskatchewan, and girls from Saskatchewan don't do these kind of things. But it was really strong. And so I knew enough about epiphanies or whatever you want to call that, mm -hmm. that if you don't do it, your life is going to be hell. So I negotiated with it, and I said, okay. I'll do my best, but I don't promise anything. And if it's meant to be, there'll be a series of synchronistic events. Mm -hmm. So I'm like 20, right? So I, I knew enough about synchronicity. And so I just watched for the synchronistic events and sure enough, they showed up. <laughs> and uh, I ended up going back to school for outdoor recreation management. And I came back to the Rockies just as adventure, te adventure and ecotourism were about to explode. So this is mid nineties. And I got in with one of the first companies out here. So I, I got established early, and so my real, my real interest was how do I connect people to nature? I just didn't, so I did it, I learned, one, keeping them safe, hiking, and so on, um, and two, through stories. So I got a chance to explore interpretation and how to tell good stories, how to presence the thing that you're telling a story, um, and also natural history, just learning about the environment. Mm -hmm. And then I came to a point, another kind of hit in my road where it's like, this is, feels like industrial tourism. This isn't feeding my soul. So not, that's another story. But I ended up getting connected to what's called Wilderness Awareness School and John Young. And John Young has a model that he calls the Eight Shields Mentoring Model. And so to make a long story short, um, he was mentored by a man named uh, Tom Brown Jr. who was mentored by um, Stocking Wolf, who is an Apache Scout and one of the last remaining ones in North America mm -hmm. off 
or, you know, just still wandering around on the land. Yeah, yeah. And he came to New Jersey to train his grandson or mentor his grandson and Tom was his friend. So there was this indigenous lineage of nature connection getting passed down. And so John Young just tried to figure out, what did he do with me? Like, why am I a good naturalist? So he created this system of nature connection based on coyote mentoring in an invisible school. It's beautiful. And so I started integrating these elements into my guided hikes as a way to connect people to nature because I knew that they weren't really connected because they talk too much. And they, yeah. you know, they just kind of go through the Are landscape the blindly. <laughs> and so I was trying to be a coyote. So that was interesting. And then um, I was doing my natural history training with him and I was doing my yoga teacher training actually with Ann Douglas, who is also here at this, you know, for a while here in Bath. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed that I would slip into this light state of meditation when I did my yoga and I'd go tracking and I thought, wow, there's something to this. So I thought, how can I bring them together? So I started to create what's called eco yoga, where I would take people hiking. We do walking meditation. We do yoga on these amazing places and uh, mindful moments. And so that did take people deeper. I, you know, a lot of people have had amazing experiences out here entering the landscape in that way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really powerful. But then I thought, how do I just get the average person into this place? Um, and then I got introduced to forest therapy. And the, in the Japan, they have something called, they call Shinden Yoku, which is, means to bathe in the atmosphere of the forest or forest bathing. And um, so I went and did my training for that a couple of years ago. And it's just this whole process of nature connection, deep nature connection that anybody can do, any physical ability. I don't take them high up in the mountains. I don't go very far at all, but it's a really beautiful, deep experience. And what I'm noticing, and the science is backing all this up now, and I've noticed this for years, but I didn't know why, mm -hmm. that when people come out and they tune into their senses and they slow down, it's like their whole biology recalibrates itself. They yeah. get clarity, right? They get present. <laughs> their nervous system calms down. Their executive function, like you know, your, your ability to think and to um, make decisions, you know, creative thinking, that all resets itself. And so people are very clear because they're very present and their biology has recalibrated. And now I understand, I, I take leaders out and executives out, they, they'd find me and they knew they were stressed and they need to go to the mountains and I, I would just do these basic things because that's what I do and that's what I've been taught. And they'd have these profound experiences. I was like, how is this possible? But this is what the body does. We're designed to be in nature. We're not designed to be on our phones, mm -hmm. you know, for eight hours a day or computers. So, so now my real, I guess I've got clarity on my path that, you know, my path really is to connect people to nature. And now it seems even more important than it did 20 years ago when that first happened, because we have these, all these stuff that distracts us. Like we didn't have that 20 years ago. Yeah. And I noticed myself getting pulled into my technology and wasting two hours here or there, which I don't really have, and just being distracted. And so now I, I'll use mindfulness meditation practice for 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at, in the evening, um, and I'll go out for walks in nature on either daily or every other day. Um, there's this great, uh, it's like a pyramid poster that forest therapy folks in that world come, have come out with, and the research backs this up, that we need to be outside for a minimum of five hours a month. So for most people, you know, I'm outside six hours a day most yeah. days because I'm a guy. Uh, so that's not a problem, but for many people it is. But if you just want to have basic health and vigor, you need to be outside for five hours a month. Mm -hmm. So you could do that for 15 minutes a day. You could do that a couple hours uh, a week, you know, however you do that. But this pyramid shows, you know, daily, just trying to get out for 15 to 20 minutes at lunch, right? Yeah. Uh, monthly, it's good to go for a deep dive. Right? Go out for a day, go for a half day hiking mm -hmm. or, or just being in nature or going and doing a forest bathing session. That will re totally reset you. And then uh, I annually go for a, a nature-based vacation with your family. Like, yeah. Have some fun, camping, yeah. whatever, <laughs> right? Um, but I'm really seeing for health, we, it's more important now than ever before to be outside. And I think Richard Louvre has summarized it the best. He said, 
uh, basically summarizing that the more technology we have in our lives, the more nature time we need mm -hmm. just to keep coming back to ourselves. So, so that's what I do. And that's what I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about the importance of being, uh, spending time in nature and talking about the science. The science yeah. is very compelling. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I, I almost want to probe you for that, but I think we'll save that for the event because well, I, 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 I looked into it and, and it's, yeah. it's quite interesting. And, and even as a side story, um, you know, for anybody watching, I guess, I, I, I uh, we got introduced through a friend uh, and uh, I watched uh, your TED talk that you did and, uh, and then I'm, I'm my girlfriend uh, at the time, you know, I said, well, let's go into the mountains. I got to go to the mountains. And so I was working a different job and I'd actually been sitting on WUB for, you know, four years, maybe more, you know, and out of fear and whatever else, just timing is a big thing too, because, uh, just wasn't quite ready, if that makes sense. Um, but anyhow, I'll, I'll keep the, the story short <laughs> for time's sake, but went out to the, to the mountains Friday, went in Monday morning and resigned from my job and, uh, and then just started for focusing on this full time. <laughs> and so it's, it is really powerful. And, and I think, you know, for anybody thinking of coming, I, I think you really touched on it, that it, it can be so powerful in getting that clarity in your life. And, and I think that's something that the world needs where so many people are lost where you're going. And it's really easy to get into that routine of every day I go to work, I do this, and you don't take that time to just yeah. be present and go, step back and look at your life and go, okay, here's where I'm at. Where do I want to be? Am I heading in the right direction? And when you're an autopilot, it's really hard. And, and um, my own personal experience was that, you know, taking that time to be out in nature. And, and to be honest, we didn't even do a major hike or anything. It was just, you know, we went up to the BAM Center and stayed there and, yeah. you know, wandered out into the woods a little bit and was just like, nope, no, I know exactly what I need to do. Yeah. You know? And it was a crazy, terrifying thought to do but uh, but yeah so I know a bit of a side story but I just wanted to throw that but in there because it, it, it has been powerful for me personally and yeah. um, that's that's part of where, where you know this event is happening because yeah. it's here's all these amazing things that have been powerful for people and let's bring them all together and yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's going to be I think really profound for a lot of people. <laughs> I think it's interesting that you're doing it in the BAM Center. Um, I, I, I do a lot of guiding around there, and uh, so I've researched a lot of the stories. And um, one of the things that I know we're inviting an elder and stuff, um, but the BAM, that little mountain, what we call Tunnel Mountain, is is a, a very sacred place for our mm -hmm. Siksika and, and Stony folks. It's it's uh, it's a to the Siksika, it's known as Inisco or Buffalo Mountain, and mm -hmm. to the Stony Nakoda, it's known as Sleeping Buffalo. And uh, for the Siksika, it is a it's it's a vision questing mountain. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of power in that land, and I find it really fascinating that the BAM Center is there on that yeah. land, and you know there's no vision questing going on there anymore. But the BAM Center is there, and the BAM Center for almost a century has been calling people. To, to step up and yeah. to do more and be more of themselves, uh, you know, and do things that they didn't think they could do. Mm -hmm. And so I, I find it fascinating that you went to the BAM Center and you had this experience. Because <laughs> I think that's what, the, what it encompasses. That's what happens at the BAM Center it, it, and in BAMF. It does have such an incredible energy where, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, I believe it's the largest arts and culture incubator in the world, oh, you know, so yeah. it, it's, uh, I know a lot of people are just, you know, to clarify for if anybody's curious, you know, yeah. it, they're like, oh, the hotel or it's a, the only way to describe it. It's really indescribable where it, it's a, a campus, you know, where it's 46 acres, I believe, Something and it's, like that. Yeah. it's footprint is you know, uh, almost the same size as the town of Banff. Yep. And it's funny where people don't even know it's there. But, uh, so yeah, yeah, again, a little little off topic. Of, yeah. On, yeah. But um, off topic, but on topic, let's yeah. say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this, but this is the thing, and this is what I'm noticing. I, I have I've had a handful, you know, uh, I get regular calls from executives who are stressed out and going through transitions, and, and um, they first started to come to me and said, you know, I really like the sound of that eco-yoga program. Can I have that but without the yoga? <laughs> sure <laughs> and so but this is it is is all I have done is we, I always start with some kind of censoring sensory invitation to invite them back into their senses and then walk slowly and I've had people say and this happens regularly they say things like oh my goodness I haven't felt this way in a long time mm -hmm. 
So they're so frazzled and they're so stressed out that they haven't felt like themselves in a long time. And, and I think, oh my goodness, you're making just important life decisions from this frazzled place. Mm -hmm. So I do coaching work in, in a, uh, now with clients and I usually take them for a walk and I do this first. So we clear away the road dust, we get them present, and then clarity comes just like what you did. Like you just know. You just yeah. know what you got to do. Yeah. It's not rocket science. <laughs> it's not all but that you, noise, right? No, you just got to get back in your body, and nature helps us do that. Mm -hmm. And so, for the as a as a guide, I kind of see myself as I open the door, and nature does her thing. Yeah. And it's individual. Like when I'm leading a forest bathing session, I know that every single person is going to have a totally different experience, and it's perfect. Yeah. 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 That's exciting. So I'm really looking forward to doing the forest bathing with for you guys at the at the BAM Center. Definitely. And yeah, and so that that'll be on the, the Sunday and then yeah. uh, in case anybody hasn't checked the schedule too, also on Saturday we've got you doing the talk as well. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm I'm super excited, like I said, because it personally impacted me and I I think it will others and it kind of yeah. sets the tone, you know, of here's some facts which um, depending who you are are really good or anybody, you know, it's good to go, here's the science, here's why we're doing this and then yeah. the next day hey let's let's go out into nature <laughs> yeah yeah and i like about what i like about this is anybody can do it mm -hmm. anybody and I, I know i love meditation and i could sit for hours meditating but i also recognize not everybody can do that yeah, um, yeah. i think it's good for everybody but i think it's good for people to have different tools to help them come down to get present to be in the moment yeah. and it's nice because for some of my clients, I know they can't, and so I know that they put in a bit of effort, and nature will help them the rest of the way. Yeah. So there's there's something happening that's bigger than myself, and there's something powerful when we tune into our senses. Yeah, it's very powerful. It's subtle, <laughs> but it's powerful. It's, it's subtle until you go back and quit your job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. You're and right. then you're like, oh, it is subtle. Though. I get what you mean, but, <laughs> but it, yeah, it, it, you know. it, yeah. It, but it but it is it's subtle but it can kick you in the ass a little too. <laughs> yeah. But the clarity is so shift. strong, you just know, right? Yeah. You probably it was so strong it's like I don't really have to It was. Here. It w it was so like you said that voice where it's like you need to do this and you know it's the voice that you know has been there a lot but when all that chaos of life and having to pay nice. bills and that fear of well how am I going to pay my bills next month and how am I going to yeah. you know provide for my kids and do all these things and yeah. you know but it, it, I feel nature can give you that trust too or you yeah. know that connection to divine or universe or yeah. spirit or whatever you want to call it where uh, you know we are I personally believe we're being guided on a journey and, and we're either listening or not you know and yeah. so it really is a good way to tune in yeah and it helps it helps you be embodied and when you're embodied and you're in your body and you're listening into that place of stillness or quietude you can hear those inner whisperings those little nudges it sounds like mm -hmm. you got a kick but <laughs> but but that's what puts us in the flow yeah. And that's where those synchronicities start to happen. But if we're just full of noise and distraction and rushing, mm -hmm. and I've been there, I get it. Yeah. Um, we don't notice the synchronicities. We're not in the flow. So, you know, all these practices that we're doing this weekend are just fantastic ways to just get us back in the body, to be embodied, so we can listen to those deeper places in ourselves that kind of show us where to go. Mm -hmm. We always are having those nudges. We just don't always listen to them. Definitely. You've got to be quiet <laughs> enough to listen to them. So this is just another fantastic tool. And I, I love that you touched on, too, kind of going back to the event as a whole as well. And that, and that was kind of my experience. And, and anybody I've really talked to is, well, this worked for me, this didn't. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love that you touched on the fact that we do have a bit of everything. And yeah. we'll have, you know, at times three workshops going on where, yeah. you know, like you said, I... I know a lot of people zero interest in yoga but want to meditate or they want to dive into this or they want to get out in nature or they want to do that and so you know that was really something yeah uh, important to capture is yeah. <laughs> to each their own right it's yeah. your own journey and so um, you, got, you got to feel what lights you up yeah exactly yeah, and your body you'll have this feeling of aliveness when you hit the right ones yeah right <laughs> and those who are coming to mind i'm just going to ask that they dress really warm because it's not a hike so <laughs> forest bathing um it's a different nature connection mm -hmm. so we're not going to hike i love hiking but we're not going for a hike um it's not a naturalist walk so i'm not going to be sharing all that natural stuff when i you know when i do my other jobs um it's a third way of connecting to nature mm -hmm. and it's very slow and it's very sensorial so i'm purposely trying to open up the the senses and the senses 
are the doorway to being present, mm -hmm. right? And so we just need to, it's November, so we just need to dress, like overdress. Yeah. It's, it's better that people, because <laughs> I know people are going to be just choosing at the last minute. Yeah. Um, so I need to know that people who are coming in my walk just overdress and be yeah. super warm because because sometimes it just takes time. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you just need to slow down. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'll give invitations as different invitations in my process to maybe it's connect with the tree, maybe it's um, to notice what's moving. And this is where the brain starts to rewire itself when mm -hmm. you just slow down and tune in very one-pointed awareness for whatever whatever the invitation is, I, I know that doesn't give you a lot of information to go on, but it's a beautiful <laughs> keep process. Some of it, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just want people to. It's yeah. better if people are warm and their feet are dry and all that kind of it, stuff. It, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it makes sense if you're yeah. freezing and shivering and yeah. you go, "What is this over?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you so know, the, the idea you are, is to be present. <laughs> the more fun you're gonna, the more uh, enjoyable it's going to be. Awesome. Yeah, and so my process, we we kind of um, do this do a bit of sensory invitations and then we do slowing down and then we get into what's called the liminal space. It's that space in between and it's like where time stands still and mm -hmm. I do invitations in that place and then I come out with a tea ceremony to oh, help people <laughs> transition back with natural herbs from that forest. Oh cool. Yeah, to I literally <laughs> take the forest back into ourselves. So oh, it's neat. a really beautiful process. That's exciting. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I know we, we got a little bit more time here, so um, some things I do want to ask you about uh, around the event um, and yourself, uh, and we've talked about this in some of the other interviews, is that, you know, this isn't one of the things where you're on stage and we whisk you away and mm -hmm. you're, you, nobody can talk to you kind of thing, right? right. Um, so I know you'll be there in and out over the weekend and, you know, partaking in Web itself. Um, what are you most excited for, or any of the workshops or anything in particular? Um, um, well, I'm, well, you've got quite a lineup, I have to say, so um, I'm looking forward to attending some of the other workshops, but I'm also, just the whole idea with the music in the evening, I find this really fascinating, because when you usually go to these wellness, you know, these wellness events, it's very calm and mindful, and I just feel like you're just blowing the roof off in the evenings, <laughs> like, I just think this is going to be, like, um, it's very alive like it's really I'm really looking forward to the the evenings and like the whole idea that you're bringing arts into it um, which is different than what I've seen in other places so I'm just really looking forward to the whole mix because I, I find this really fascinating I haven't seen that before awesome yeah. no, I'm, I'm excited for it too and to be honest I haven't seen it too and that's yeah it's kind of you know where it came about from for me it's kind of my dream event where I'm like I love music I love sitting there connecting with an yeah. artist and then I, you know, I'll watch them dance and then I, well, then I love sound healing. Oh, and I love getting in nature and I love this. And yeah. so like, I think it's, you know, I think, yeah, not, I think I'm, I'm pretty positive that most people walk out of it just going, holy crap, that was a roller coaster ride of you well, know, ups and downs and deep yeah. work. And yeah. Like music. it's alive, um, right? Like it's really alive. It's not just this subdued chant, you know, I love chanting, but you know what I mean? Like it's not mm. just quiet. It's, like you've got, yeah, it's, it's a ride. It's going to be really interesting. Awesome. So, and, and the people, I, you know, these type of events have really neat people in them. So I'm really looking forward to meeting the folks and the participants and the other, uh, the other, um, um, presenters and stuff like that. Awesome. So yeah, I think you've got a really great mix. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it. It's just kind of, as, as you know, organically happened, you know, it, it's, uh, you touched on it earlier where right? you're in that flow where you find that purpose and you know I really believe this is my purpose and mm -hmm. um, it's been kind of freaky where you know meeting you and just <laughs> you introduced me to Anne and so on and all these people just ah, here we are and yeah. this is what's happening and yeah. so it's uh, yeah I'm, I'm excited and obviously excited to have you involved and yeah, I think uh, you're, you're, you and everybody there are really going to impact some lives mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's me. I think it's me. Very full uh, weekend, and I know when I do my sessions, the intention is really that people get what they need, mm -hmm. and I get that sense from you too, because yeah. you know you're you're giving all these different you know uh, opportunities for experiences that there's people are going to get some pretty powerful nuggets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if if everyone can get one, like you know you've done your job. Yeah. 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 Well, and we, and we really tried to keep it open too for yeah. 
Um, whether you're, you know, like you said, you've been in that flustered work executive world for so long and you've never meditated, you've never done yoga, you've never done anything, you know, mm-hmm. this is a good, mm-hmm. a really good place to test the waters, if you yeah. will, and figure out, like you said, what, what do I like? What do I don't like? Yeah. Um, and then all the way to, I mean, a lot of the people we have coming have been in this for years and they're going, oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I know all these things fill me up. So, yeah. um, yeah. well, let's go do it. Right. So, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, exactly. um, yeah, ple- pleasure having you and getting yeah. to learn more about what you do and, um, happy to have you at the event and thanks for, for your yeah, time today. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Ron. I'll give you a hug. Okay. (laughs) That's how I close all All my my interviews. We got a hug.